Welcome to our weekly live chat. I'm Pat Caputo, sports columnist for the Oakland Press. This is Jeff Kuhn, the sports editor. Uh, we're here every week at 1 o'clock with football season cooking up. It's really going to be a big deal every Monday uh, here at the OaklandPress.com and various other uh, digital media outlets. Here we got our football tab is out as well. Check it out at MIPrepZone.com or you can check it out as well. Uh, pick it up. Um, so Sunday's paper. Sunday's paper. It's an outstanding thing. Uh, I read it cover to cover, actually. You wrote it. You wrote I write it. I wrote, I wrote it down about Al Fricasa. But, uh, you know, check that out as well. I'll post that up on uh, my Twitter site. It's Pacabuto98 on Twitter, Jeffrey Kuhn, if you want to follow uh, Jeff on Twitter as well. But anyway, let's get right to it. We're going to talk about the Lions coming out of the shoot right away now. Uh, you know, the season fast approaching. Michigan, Michigan State, we'll get into their season, what we think. They open this weekend uh, in East Lansing and Ann Arbor on Friday and Saturday. And we'll get into the Tigers and just some of the record setting things that are going on with the Tigers and a couple other issues. We'll get to that at 120. But we're not on a set script here. If you want to leave a question or comment, please do. Aftab Borka is in for Paul Camp, who's gone off to get married. Congratulations to him and his lovely bride, Nicole. And um, we're, uh, you know, here, uh, off top, we'll put the questions or comments to us, pipe in when we do. It's real simple. People get freaked out by the Google Hangout and all that. It's not. You just type it in, off top, we'll relay the question to us. And instead of typing the answer back, we, you know, speak it back to you. But anyway, let's get right to it, Jeff. Lions preseason, I don't know what to make out of it, other than the fact that it was probably the most unimpressive 40-9 to victory I've ever seen over a great team and a great quarterback. I don't know why. Maybe it was because it was after the whistle penalties. An overreaction on my part, Jeff, or you still have some of those concerns? I well, don't know. It comes a week after they look so bad against Cleveland, Pat. There's just nothing you can make of the preseason. The starters play limited amount of, of playing time, and – and that was a New England team that didn't seem to be focused on that game at all. And uh, But you're right. I mean, those those personal foul penalties are something that has plagued this team in the past, and you, you would think that they had that cleaned up this year. It's troubling that they don't. Well, I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was embarrassing, to be honest with you. And I don't know whether I'm making too much of this or not. Maybe people can help me out with it. You know, I wrote in my column for Sunday's paper after watching that, um, on Thursday, that I, I I thought that Willie Young, that was embarrassing. I mean, it was it, it, it kind of summed up the Lions. Here's a player who is not without promise, is a pretty good player who I've, I've always thought a lot of, to be honest with you. Um, but he gets bad penalties uh, after the whistle against Cleveland. It was kind of ridiculous. And then the, the whole thing where he points his finger in Tom Brady's you know face mask. He did it twice, Jeff. He did it on the first play. He got in the game as well. Um, you know, it's kind of silly. I mean, what's the point? You're Willie Young. He's Tom Brady. You don't look very good doing that. You're not going to intimidate the guy at all. I mean, that's just not going to happen. And the NFL, that doesn't work, especially with Tom Brady. Right. So, I mean, it was a reflection of the lack of discipline that the Lions have. Now, you know, we've had this debate a lot about I always feel like, um, you know, you have to be aggressive in the NFL. And uh, sometimes you're better to play – to that edge than not play to that edge. It's just a fact of life in that world, even with all the new rules and all the things that are going on. But, uh, you know, that's silly, and it showed a lack of discipline, a, a huge lack of discipline. puts Lions in a, an unusual spot where it's like maybe they should cut this guy when they've worked so hard in developing into a pretty good player. He has developed into a usable player. It's just, like, really weird. Uh, Nick Fairley took a shot at some guard standing there. You know, which was bizarre. They need him to play well. Don't say it doesn't rear its head in the uh, regular season. It has clearly at the end of 2011 and 2012 affected the Lions in the in the way they played. I mean, so I don't know whether I'm making too much out of those couple plays and not noticing the turnovers that were created, or you know, the way Reggie Bush was a terrific. He really looks good in the preseason. Um, they seem to have some problems at wide receiver. Uh, nobody's really separated themselves to come to the forefront. Um, Nate Burleson, you know, may or may not. I don't know what to make of him, whether he's an older player who has lost that little bit after a serious injury or whether it's just the preseason it doesn't matter for Nate Burleson. I don't know, to be honest with you, but that's a problem. And 
I don't know. I, I, it's just I don't know what to make of it. I really don't. They're, they're very dependent, I think, on Louis Delmas' knee. But on the other hand, I see a lot of good things with them. What are your thoughts? Well, I like that. First of all, on the penalty front, you know who the most penalized team in the NFL was last year? The Lions. No. Oh, the Ravens. The Ravens. And, right. And how, what'd that get them? You know? Right. Well, it goes to the aggression, but it's not uh, necessarily the penalties, but when they happen. Right. You know, those penalties, both of, on both those penalties, the Lions created turnovers, right? Right. Both those penalties, I believe they settled for field goals, correct? Right. Right. You know, and one one of one of the penalty they got too pinned them way back in their own end. Right. Uh, so they've they've I don't know some of the penalties they've had just don't make a lot of sense. Right. They, they those are things they have to shore up. But but Pat, like you said, there are some promising things. They've got some star quality players on this. They truly team. do. And and the addition of Bush is going to help greatly. Uh, defensive line Ansel looks like it, like he's going to help right Yeah, but this thing with the concussion is a little disturbing. I don't know what's going to come out of that. That's, you know? that's right. You know, uh, so, you know, it's, it's something I, I don't know. But it, he is a tremendous talent, and he is a very good player, with emphasis on very good player. The question I have about Ziggy Anza is, like all NFL players, one of your skills is staying healthy, and the concussion card can come up at weird times. They got hit in practice with non-pad practice, and he got a concussion. It seems, apparently, I don't know, allegedly, I don't know how to describe that. Well, Maybe nothing. Come out, but they, they were pretty. Out, they said it's a concussion yet, but they've been pretty mum on that. Pat, it's disconcerting. That's a whole other topic, Pat. And, and the concussions are dealt with so much differently today than when you played football, for example. I mean, you got hit in the head. Eight times in a game, and it was shake it off, get back in there. Yeah. Oh, well, first of all, let me clarify. I think I never played football like Ziggy Anza. No, 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 no. I no. mean, you know, in the NFL or whatever is high school, but I do know that when I played high school football, that I led with my head, and my head was my biggest weapon. Maybe that explains some things. <laughs> um, but uh, well, it was it was dealt with differently. I mean, if you rattled your marbles, that's kind of what was looked at. Take some smelling salts. Yeah, you know, I remember, I do remember, but I never had anything that would remotely be like a concussion. But I do remember making hits, you know, filling the hole, you know, playing linebacker and hitting somebody. And, uh, you know, boom, head to head, and I'd see a light. You know, I mean, I think people who play football know what I'm talking about. You see a light for just a moment. Now, though, it's, it's, I guess it's proven that those constant thuds like that or those moments do cause you know, uh, especially for college players and NFL players who keep playing year after year, um, it causes a lot of issues that they're studying neuro neurologically. So I don't know, you know, what the factor is. But, yeah, it's a different thing. But it, the, back to the Lions on this, Ziggy Anza has been very good. He's really, really been good. Um, their defensive line did impose its will in that game. I thought that that was a good thing. DeAndre Levy has played very well. I thought that Bill Bentley played better in that third preseason game than the first two. But, you know, Slay was out there. That was good that he got that experience of Tom Brady looking out there and saying, hey, man, we're going to pick on you and throw the ball to you. He has to learn. Um, I like a lot of things that they're doing. I still think they're going to be 10-6 and six and still have a chance to win a playoff game. I haven't changed my opinion on it. I did think it was uh, the kicking game, too. I do think, too, and I wanted to say this, uh, and again, leave a question or comment. Aftab seems like he's kind of like over there in the corner. We want Aftab to, to work here. You know, <laughs> have Aftab uh, get on the air and tell us a question or comment. Jeff, will we give you a book or something? You got any books there, Jeff? I got a couple books People here. People sign into this thing, but they think it's just like a chat. Just uh, put a question up there. We'll get to it. Aftab, you got any questions? Oh, we can't hear Aftab. So. Can't. You can hear there me now? Yeah, we can hear you now, buddy. Yeah, I'm here. I'm watching you. The daddy's watching. Uh, no, I'm just there. Kidding. You go. You're like Big Brother, man. Yeah. So yeah, keep like it up. That's been going. Yeah. You're watching us. Yeah, we haven't got any questions going well. So yeah. There we go. Up. Off top, he needs a question. Ask off top a question. But uh, you know, people are on there. Off top is there. But uh, just leave a question. People get freaked out. We know you're there. You know, we see the numbers on the app, but we just. We want you to ask a question. We want to talk to you, seriously. This is the way things are going to be going with the media here with these videos. We love this. I love the Google Hangout thing. Um, Jeff, um, you know, talking about, the, you know, different things, 
the kicking game. I think one thing that's backfired on them is signing Kickalicious. What do you think about that? Because fans got their biggest boo, the biggest boo that they had in that game, even more than Young, even more than when Belichick didn't put Tim Tebow in at the end of the game. That was quite a hoot. Uh, was uh, you know, uh, the, I'm sorry, guys, the, if, if my interject. I mean, I have a personal question of myself, and sure. I, I'm not really a big um, football-educated guy or knows one, but the concussions have recently uh, made me seem, and I'm, I'm a father of, like a 13 month old that the all these stories are making me feel I'm not gonna send my uh, kid to football I mean is, is is it what every parent is thinking these days no, I think it is a big question off top I talked about it for four hours on my radio show on Saturday I mean uh, for three at least three of the hours were you know uh, people saying would you let your kid play football if he wanted to play football and I, I defended football because of all the educational experiences that I had I went to a, a tremendous college at Michigan State, um, and I don't mean any disrespect to that. I don't mean any disrespect to my baseball coach, Jim Crosby at Groves, who was huge. Tom Lakos, my summer coach in American Legion, or uh, Len Nabilski was my other summer coach. I learned a lot of lessons playing baseball. I mean, basketball, I played that through ninth grade. But, Jeff, more than anything else, I learned from playing high school football. It was the greatest experience and learning experience I ever had. And we were a lousy team, you know, we were barely mediocre, you know, we beat Harris in my junior year and that was about it. We played in a tough league, we had a lot of Division One players on our team, but we lost a lot of, of games and just getting up and after that, I played on a, I, was, I didn't make the varsity in 10th grade, I was on the JV team, we had 17 guys on the team and we got our ass kicked, we were one in seven and uh, I learned more from that I think than anything else, that's not a unique lesson of football. Uh, I wrote, Keith Dunlap wrote about this this weekend, and the people who played, you know, I think they understand that. I, I, right. I don't even know how to explain it. But these injuries, you know, I, I, they're they're kind of disconcerting, sure. But I would I would let my if I I don't have children, but I would let them play. How about you? If your kids had wanted to play, did you discourage them to play? You had a kid who played hockey for crying out loud. It well, wasn't like he was playing in the no check league either. Yeah, you know that. Uh, I had a, a son that played hockey, played all very good years. one through college, and I had a, another son that played football. Which That's right. Center at Sea Home, starting center there for two years, and uh, I worried about it. I worried about it a lot, but, um, you know, as Keith wrote, I mean, you have to – you can get hurt playing soccer but getting a ball hit off the head. I mean, you can get hurt in baseball, get hit in the head with a pitch. You can get hurt in all walks of life, and, and the lessons that you learn playing those team games, I think, if you have a kid that's into it, and if you have a kid that's passionate about it, you can't, you got to let them live life, you know, and, and we're doing everything we can to, to make the game safe, to take away the head-to-head -head hits in both hockey and football, and, um, you know, you, you, life goes on, you know, in, in, in my book, and both, both the lessons that my kids learn playing sports um, in both cases, I mean, it, it's helped them get to where they are today. Yeah, I mean, I I told a story of this intramural softball my first year at Michigan State. Um, I I refereed like sports to pay extra, you know, for my spare money. Right. And uh, I was uh, refereeing or umpiring an intramural softball uh, game, and this didn't happen in the game that I was uh, officiating, but uh, it happened on another field right adjacent to where I was working that day. A uh, kid had uh, taken a, uh, a double play. I knew the kid. He lived in my dorm. He uh, briefly, I was acquaintance, you know. And you know, the guy turned a double play, and this guy was a pretty good ball player, pretty good athlete, big, strong, you know, uh, type of guy. I think he probably played high school sports. And it was just a recreational softball game, basically. The guy turned a double play, threw the ball, hit him right in the heart, and he died. When I mentioned that on the air the other day, you know, there was somebody called up and he remembered that. You know, you, but it was just a softball game. Right. You, could, you know, I well, I did a story about uh, Daniel Zaharski, who's the best high school baseball player in the state at Bishop Foley a couple years ago. His brother, who was a you know, like a 12-letter winner in high school at uh, Hamtramck High, was made paraplegic. He was just swimming in a, in a lake, and he, nothing was a miss or anything. He was just swimming. He dove down, he hit his head, and he became a – a paraplegic um, through just going to swim and uh, innocent thing 
and it, that turned tragic. We right. could get hit by a car. We could uh, be in a car accident. You know, what are you going to stop driving? You know, so that's how I look at football. And I don't maybe I just love football so much that I'm not looking at it realistically. But you know, I loved it so much. I I just loved it so much when I you know was doing that. And you know, it was a disappointing thing. You know, uh, because we lost some games, and you know, I still remember that. But I, I think that that did some character building. You know, when you get knocked down, you know, you got to get back up. I think that's what you learn from football. Hey, Pat, we're gonna go. We're gonna go this weekend. Uh, Michigan game. They open up against Central. You're gonna go Friday night. Michigan State against Western. You got that big and, double header. And and you look. You look at how much football is a part of the American culture. And I mean, all the way to the marching band involved, the cheerleaders yeah. involved, athletic programs supporting various other athletic programs, yeah. football programs supporting so many things at big time universities. Um, and of course, you know, the contracts of the presidents and coaches and all that stuff. Football is part of American culture. And I, I think you do everything you can to make the game safe, but to say that they're going to get rid of football. Participation is down. That's down ten. Well, it's a concern. You, off top, you know, is talking about it. He's not somebody who has a any type of football, you know, background, um, like you and I would. You know, where it's part of our life. A lot of people are Cricket. coming in. Yeah, Cricket always. Yeah, I mean, you, that's the you're, you're the whole thing about it, though. I mean, it's interesting, off top. It really is because a lot of people, you know, who have no background in football may come. Be born in other countries. This is a country where we're a melting pot, and people come in from various cultures. Uh, the culture that uh, I grew up in, you know, acclimated to football right away. American football. Uh, the culture that's coming into this country right now may not. Although I'll say this: Dearborn Fortson, you know, they had a big, big difference in their culture in terms of demographics uh, from the 1960s to today. And they're still a football power. Right. right. So, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people have come in here and gotten a acclimated into uh, the American culture and football and love it. So I love football. So it's really hard for me. Maybe I don't speak, you know, uh, fairly about it. But, you know, I loved that experience as a kid just playing it. And uh, I sincerely love watching it. I can't wait for Friday and Saturday night. And right. The only disappointment I have is – I'm going to be at Michigan State rather than over in Oxford watching Orion play uh, <laughs> play uh, the, the Wildcats out on the blue turf. You know? The backyard brawl, there you go. Yeah, you know, or uh, Clarkston playing Adams, you know. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Brother Rice has got a huge game this weekend, you know, against St. Ignatius, so. Right, right. You get your opportunity. Well, well you, know, you always yeah. make time for that. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah. it's always you know, it's a great, great thing. You know, high school football on the Friday night lights. You, you go out there to where uh, out near where I live on that M twenty four corridor when Lake Orion plays. The, the the this town is you know, it gets a little silent. I right. mean, it's a big, especially when they're playing Oxford or they're playing Clarkston. Right. On those nights, you know, you can't get anywhere near. The state, I don't know if you've been out there for you weren't you out there for the yeah, uh, we went uh, there, went together for that blue turf and all yeah that. when they first I mean you couldn't get anywhere near that stadium yeah. in Oxford my gosh you know you'd think Ron Pack and Puda they had like you, know, you got to go and pick up your pass over here and you know they had like security there and everything I mean it was like ten thousand people there and it's right. like that at Orion when they played that game there although people in Orion knew who I was. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, speaking of Michigan, Michigan State, what do you think of both those teams this year, Pat? Well, I got to say that, uh, you know, I think Michigan's building to something special. I kind of get the feeling they are. Um, but what I think is interesting is, and if you're asking me, uh, do I think Michigan State has a really good team this year? No, I think they're just okay. And I think they'll be 7-5, and five, and I think Michigan has a better team on paper. Now, having said that, uh, how good a coach is Mark D'Antonio? Are we underestimating him? The last time he had a, a disappointing season like they won they had last year was 2009, and they reacted in 2010 by winning 11 games and sharing the Big Ten title, and then following it up with 11 wins. So maybe we're underestimating them uh, from that standpoint, and their schedule is definitely easier 
uh, than uh, Michigan's. But uh, Michigan's got to go to Ohio, uh, go to Penn State, and it's got to go to Northwestern. Those are going to be tough games. And I think that division, uh, the leaders' division, is going to be fascinating because you could throw Nebraska, Northwestern, Michigan, and Michigan State kind of in a pot. Right. It'd be kind of hard to figure out who's going to get to that Big Ten title game. But uh, I think I have Michigan at nine and three, and I got Michigan State at seven and five. I think like a game like Iowa at Iowa is going to be tough for Michigan State to win. I didn't. I think you know all the stuff about their defense. Everybody was so impressed with their defense last year. I thought that was terrible how they just couldn't stop anybody when they had to at the end of games. And, you know, people were banging the drum about their defense. Okay, we'll stop somebody when you really have to. And then, then you know, talk that way. Right, right. A quarterback situation at Michigan State. How, how do you think that's going to shake out? Do you think Maxwell will be there again? I, you know what? I, I, I haven't heard anything myself from somebody. But, you know, I can read all the media reports that seem to indicate it's going to be Maxwell. But, I, you know, I think Connor Cook will take a snap or two. I think D'Antonio is smart enough to keep the competition open. I think he understands that competition is a good thing. They also got this other kid, Tyler O'Connor, who nobody ever mentions. He's a redshirt freshman. That kid was the high, highest rated of the three, four quarterbacks that they have. Terry's the other one. So they do have a choice there. And the big difference is I don't know what this thing with Warner and Bowman uh, being the co-offensive coordinators is going to mean, whether there will be more separation for the receivers and Maxwell will have a better opportunity, whether those receivers have improved. I think Burbridge – uh, from Farmington Harrison is an immensely talented player, and uh, he's gotten his feet wet last year, did do some good things. I think he's a very important player for Michigan State because he may have some star potential at receiver. Uh, running back, that'll be interesting. I, you know, I keep talking about Langford from uh, Westland. John Glenn is the tailback. Uh, they got other options, uh, freshman and Holmes. Uh, Riley Bullitt was very good in the spring game. But he's a converted linebacker, and right. Le- Le- Le'Veon Bell was going to start for Pittsburgh until he got hurt. So that's right. big. That's a big replacement that they that they've got to replace, especially considering uh, you know how ground oriented they are. And the offensive line's health will be important for them. But I- I've learned not to sell Mark D'Antonio short, you know. And I-, I think a lot of Brady Hoke and what he's done at Michigan, and I think Devin Gardner's pretty good, and uh, that's a team with a lot of athletes that is uh, really starting to uh, emerge. And I think uh, that uh, you, this it will be an important transition year for Michigan, but to make sure that they're not 8-5, and five, that they're a little better than that, and that it can maybe be a springboard forward to what could be a, a long stretch of success for them the way they've recruited. They truly have. They, a lot of times, Jeff, it's just people talking about it, but I really think they've done a terrific job of recruiting. Right. Hey, Pat, you know why I like college football? It's things like it's things like Brady Hope refusing to call Ohio State Ohio State, just call them Ohio. And now the latest one is Urban Meyer not allowing anybody on Ohio's covering Ohio State football to wear blue. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know. I suppose <laughs> I'd I got my Oakland press shirt on today, but I get thrown out of practice uh, at. Um, you know, I at Ohio State. My red Oakland press shirt. Or yeah, you know. there you go. Your MI Prep Zone shirt. So you know. I get thrown out of there. But uh, yeah, it's fun, and you know, it's a great tradition. And you know, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be an interesting uh, fall. Uh, you know, in in when it comes right down, you talk about the popularity of football. You know, Lions sold out their preseason games. Lions hit six thousand people. You know. <laughs> jammed into a practice at Allen Park. Right. And, you know, right. I thought it was kind of misguided and everything, but they were going nuts over Kickalicious, you know. But they're interested in football, and it's the same with, uh, you know, college football. You know, you look at this week, there will be sold-out stadiums. And then the following week, uh, you, Michigan, Michigan State, and the Lions opening at Ford Field, you add up those crowds. That's an incredible amount of people, you know, the size of a – a pretty good-sized city uh, will be going to those three football games. Right, right. Pat, changing gears a little bit before we wrap up, Tigers and what's going on with Miguel Cabrera and uh, and Max Scherzer. You wrote about that this weekend. Well, I think, you know, where do they where do these seasons rank? You know, lately, the last – I put the use 30 years because that's kind of a landmark with the 84 Tigers and Willie Hernandez. 
of the best seasons that athletes have put together. It's amazing how many tremendous seasons Detroit athletes have put together the last 10 years. And where do these seasons rank? And I think Scherzer's is the one that's a little controversial because is he uh, somebody who's just benefited a great deal from run support or is he really that good? I don't know, 19 and 1, maybe a little bit of run support in there, but Scherzer has been flat out good, especially the last month or two. Um, no, it seems like, I don't know, it seems like no bump in the road for him, huh? It's, it well, he gets seven runs a game. Yeah, but come on, I mean, this uh, the last game, 3 nothing win on Saturday, and in fact, he helps himself out with an RBI double. He yeah. got out of some jams Saturday, no doubt. But, but I'm telling you what, 19 and one. I've never seen a season like this before. Well, uh, yeah, I think Verlander's in 2011 was better, don't you? Wow. I I don't I don't know. I mean, again, it's like Scherzer has been. Whenever you need to stop, or whenever one or two game losses, Scherzer takes uh, takes the ball. And well, he hasn't been in that spot. Like Verlander had to win like two one games after they lost three <laughs> games, you know, in a row. And uh, I thought he was more impressive. He didn't get that kind of run support. And I thought he was more clutch. But I, I don't know. I I'm not this. knocking Scherzer. I'd vote for him for the Cy Young. Well, but I, I think there'll be. This. He's not. He's not hands down the Cy Young winner like Verlander was two years ago where he was even the MVP. What do you uh, think he did merits MVP consideration? I don't I don't see that's the thing. I don't know Verlander or Scherzer's reputation warrants that and and he's not getting the love from the national media uh, when when you've got guys in the conversation who have won half as many games as him. Well I think the difference is this time there's position players that are better. Uh, Cabrera uh, and Chris Davis yeah, you know, are better than the position players uh, in the seasons they had in 2011. That wasn't Cabrera's best season in 2011. He was still very good, obviously, but uh, wasn't like last year or this year. So, you know, and I wonder if there's going to be some of this Mike Trout groundswell because he's got a better war than Cabrera. It's going to be interesting uh, when it comes down to it. I'd vote for Scherzer for Cy Young. I'd vote for uh, Cabrera as well. But uh, anyway. Enjoyed the uh, show today. Look, you guys can leave a question or comment. Look at Oftav. He's stretching out. He's all everything. We can see Oftav. Kind of the shadows of Oftav. Congratulations to Paul Cam for getting married. I guess they can relax over there at Oakland University. Paul won't be all over there like a chihuahua. <laughs> they got a little reprieve while Paul. They got a little reprieve, you know, from those stories about the president coming up here. And they the could cooperate. Basketball though. coach. Yeah, they, could, they could cooperate a little bit and answer one of our FOIA requests. That's all. Well, I think, you know, uh, when it comes down to it, maybe that's a sign that they got something to hide. Uh, you know, that's uh, kind of what I always learned about things. You know, transparency is a good thing. And the Freedom of Information Act is necessary. And we'll see uh, what's going on there. I like Oakland University. I think they know that I like them over there. But, uh, you know, some of this stuff, you know, we'll see what you got there. They're just doing what they're supposed to do, I suppose, under the situation. We'll do what we're supposed to do. That's what makes the media right. uh, relationship with who they cover what it is. But anyway, until next time, we'll see you.